Hello everybody, in this video I am going to give an update on my portfolio. Right now my portfolio is worth $109,937.83. In the past year I am up $37,934.45. Year to date for the year 2024 I am up $17,751.07. I don't have anything for the daily chart because today is Sunday night, so I did not do an update on Friday. But if we look at the weekly, I believe I'm down a little bit, yeah. I'm down $130.06 for the past week. So red for the past week, but overall I think I'm doing okay. So if we round up, I'm around $110,000 in my portfolio. And if you do watch my portfolio updates regularly, you'll notice that some positions that I had before, they have now expired or I've removed them. So let me talk about my positions. For my options, I have Amazon $140, $130 put credit spreads. These expire October 18. My total return $34. I have Amazon $200, $210 call credit spreads. These expire October 18. My total return, I am down $54. I'm selling Disney $95 calls. These expire October 18. My total return, I am down $730. I have Verizon $35, $33 put credit spreads. These expire December 20th. My total return, $1,453. I have Verizon $47, $49 call credit spreads. These expire December 20. My total return, I am down $1,550. I have Disney $70 calls. These expire December 19th, 2025. My total return, $4,361. For my stocks, I have less than one share of Amazon. Amazon is at $187.53. My average cost, $180.06. My total return, $0.72. Cents. I have 6,400 shares of SoFi. SoFi is at $7.99. My average cost, $6.12. My total return, $11,993.95. I have 400 shares of Disney. Disney is at $95.96. My average cost, $86.35. My total return, $3,845.95. This is a margin account. My margin total is $97,708.36. My options collateral is $12,000. This leaves me with $93,666.14 in buying power. My margin status is low risk. My buffer is $60,396.33. This is how much money I can lose before I get margin called. My annual interest rate is 6.05%. The daily interest I'm paying is 9.57%. Sorry, $9.57 is my daily interest that I'm paying. And I'm borrowing $1,000 of margin interest free. So several things to note here. There were some covered calls that I was doing and some of them expired. Well, let me explain. So for my Amazon covered calls, I chose a strike price of $185. And since Amazon is above $185, it's at $187.53. My 300 shares of Amazon got called away. So now those are gone from my portfolio. That's why I have less than one share now. And if we go to my history, I'm sure it'll show it. Yeah, see? I was selling I was selling the $185 covered calls 
expiring 927, which is two days ago. So because Amazon on 927 ended up above 185, that's why the shares got called away. So I lost. Not necessarily lose, but uh, I, I sold. I was forced to sell those shares at 185. So that's why um, I no longer have over 300 shares of uh, Amazon in my portfolio because they got called away since they ended up at a share price above 185 per share. Now, so far, I chose a strike price of $8.50 for my covered call. So. SoFi is below $8.50 uh, on 927. So I ended up keeping my shares and I simply made some money off of the, um, the premium from the covered calls. I hate that it makes it so complicated. Like I wish it would just tell me, okay, you sold these covered calls. How much money did you make from, from these uh, eight and a half dollar SoFi covered calls? But, uh, Unfortunately, it gets a little too complicated for me to show you, um, but yeah, I believe this is the latest one, right? Won't even open. Okay. There we go. So seven and a half to eight and a half. Oh, this was what the four. Uh, okay. This, this one was for the 400 uh, shares I had in addition to the 6,000, but originally now this selling SoFi eight and a half dollar call cover calls expiring at 927. So estimated credit was $418 and 20 cents. So for those 60 contracts at seven cents each, I made a total of around $420. And then for the four here, I made an additional, um, I forget how much, but some additional money. And like I said, because SoFi, uh, the share price stayed below eight and a half dollars, I ended up keeping my 6,400 shares of SoFi. Now Disney, I chose a strike price of, what was it? 97. That's right. I remember now I chose a strike price of 97 and Disney ended up below $97 per share on September 27th. So. I gained some money from the premium from the covered calls and ended up keeping my shares of Disney. Let me see if I can find it in the history. Yeah, here we go. Sell Disney $97 calls expiring September 27th Four contracts at 30 cents each estimated credit $119 and 88 cents. So I made about $120 from selling these covered calls. Now the other thing was Google. Those got called away. So let me see Google. Whoops. So I chose a strike price of, I believe it was 160. And as you can see, Google is above 160. It's, it's at 163. So because it's above the strike price I chose um, on 927, that means I was forced to sell my shares of Google at 160 per share. Oh, a dividend. I didn't even know that. 20 bucks. I mean, not that big of a difference, but that's like a meal, I guess. Um, that's like a lunch meal. All right, let's see. Sell Google $160 call expiring 927. One contract at 206. Estimated credit $205.97. So I made about $206. Um, well, from selling the covered call uh, as the premium, but I guess I missed out on money overall because it ended up above 160 on 927. But yeah, because I did this, I was forced to sell my shares of Google for 160 per share. Um, but yeah, overall, I still ended up making some money. Um, so there's that. At least uh, I made some money, but I did lose out on some money because it went above the break even price uh, of my covered calls 163. 
Actually, did it? Hold on, let me check. What did I sell it at? 206. So break in break even would have been 16206. Yeah, I missed out on some money. But that's okay. I made something. Am I gonna buy Google shares again and do more covered calls on Google? I'll think about it. Uh we'll see what the prices are in the morning tomorrow, and then I'll make my decision. For now, honestly. Amazon is looking pretty attractive. I think I do want to do that. Or here's the thing. I, I'm in a rare position where I have more buying power than usual. Um, $93,000 in buying power. So I have a lot of money to work with. Um, usually I try to just max it out. You know, spend my money on as many positions as possible. Or, you know, so that I could... Get my buying power as close to zero as possible, right? I want to spend all of my buying power on on whatever positions, right? Um, so this case, I have a lot of buying power, and I need to think about how I want to put this in use. There's only, I mean, it's the end of September, so only about three months left in the year to work with. Um. Something that I do think is interesting is some of the, um, I know Amazon is an online store, but I've been looking at some of the, you know, stores that exist physically, like brick and mortar stores, like Target, Walmart, Costco, things like that. Um, that's something I've been interested in. But for now, I think I do want to buy back the Amazon shares as well. At least 300 of them and then do covered calls again. Um... Something else I want to talk about too, McDonald's. Oh my goodness. What a disaster. The worst play of my life. I'm just kidding, not my life. <laughs> that was Baba. But uh, worst play of this year. Oh my goodness. So I had an iron condor on McDonald's, which is not a bearish play. It's more like a neutral play. So I wanted the McDonald's price to stay neutral and just kind of hover around where it was at, right, when I opened the Iron Condor, and then just kind of stay there and stay neutral. Unfortunately, the price of McDonald's has not remained neutral. Um, as you can see, in the past three months, the price of McDonald's has gone up $45.99. That's 17.86%, uh, and it has just steadily been going up in the past three months. So no, it has not remained neutral, and because of that, Oh boy, I lost out on, I'm going to say, around $5,000. I could have been $5,000 richer if I had not done these, uh, this McDonald's Iron Condor, but I wanted to stay below $300. And for a while it was. It was getting close, but for a while it was under $300 per share. But recently, in the past week, it... Went above 300 and I decided to myself, and this was a hard decision because I could have decided to just hang on and wait for it to go back down again if it ever does uh, below 300 again. But I said, no, I'm, I'm just going to get out. So I got out of the position. So now I no longer have a position in McDonald's. No more Iron Condor. Um, my goodness. I did not expect it to rip this much, like to be this, I mean, wow. I didn't know McDonald's would go up this much. Three months ago, it was around like 250. Oh well, it happens. Um, but yeah, I, I got out of that position. I lost about $5,000 on it, um, which is not good, but at least I'm not down that much. I could have been at 115 right now instead of 110. Oh well. Um, I do plan to make up for it. Hopefully gain a couple thousand dollars from here until the end of the year. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But for now, this is it for my portfolio. I know that uh, my positions are less than usual. I, I mean, $93,000 in buying power. You don't see that often in my portfolio. I, I usually do not have anywhere near that much buying power in my portfolio, but so many of my options expired, uh, my covered calls 
expired on 927, which is two days ago. And also I got rid of my McDonald's uh, Iron Condor on 927. So that freed up a lot of uh, buying power as well. So now I have to decide what to do with this. And I've already spoken about my plan. So um, I'll keep on making more updates to show you guys exactly what I'm going to do and what my positions are. But for now, this is it for this portfolio update. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this type of content, you guys want to see more, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll keep on making more of these portfolio updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.